I know that the population of the world is going to go from about six and a half billion to nine billion. It's going to be a huge strain on the resources of this world. And then there's the fact that we borrow between a billion and a billion and a half a day, every calendar day now to import oil. You're worried about the cost of the Iraq war, this dwarfs it. You're worried about the trade deficit with China, this dwarfs it. And there's 1.6 billion people in the world today that have no access to electricity, no access to the modern world, no help for future generations, no way forward in this modern age. I'm Vanessa Green, and I'll be graduating from MIT this June with a master's in civil and environmental engineering. And I'm Justin Ashton, and I'm also graduating in June with an MBA from the MIT Sloan School of Management. Justin and I are both members of MIT's Energy Club. And our club recently hosted a conference where we brought together global thought leaders from industry, finance, technology, and policy to address the global energy challenge. And we are not going to solve the global energy challenge through boutique solutions. Scale is, um, I like to think, is the jolt of reality that can doom a clever idea to being nothing more than a dilettante's distraction. We've got to continue to move technologies forward We've got to put smart policies in place at every level, international, national, regional, and local. And there's got to be adequate capital, literally, literally trillions of dollars that we're looking at. Addressing the energy challenge isn't as simple as producing more energy. We also have to face the environmental, political, and economic consequences of the energy choices we make. First of all, the cost of renewables is too high today. Wind is by far the most economic. and. In certain areas, it can be standalone economic on an energy only basis, but that's not good enough. Most of the renewables are essentially capital, very little operating cost, obviously no fuel cost. Uh, we need to see the capital costs come down. Energy is a capital intensive industry. The scale of this problem is going to require innovative business models and new ways to finance projects. There's more money that flows through markets in a day than all the world's governments in a year. So we've got to tap the world's capital markets. We're going to solve this problem at scale. And the other aspect of economics is opportunity cost. Today, there is no explicit cost of carbon baked in. We need to see that, which means that this country needs to move forward with a sensible uh, and pretty broad-based regulatory framework to make sure that carbon is priced into every decision that every economic actor uh, in the economy makes. America has enough coal to meet its electricity needs for close to 300 years. But because of concerns about climate change, is coal out of the picture? The math says that over the next 25 years, the, the new investments that are going to come online in coal are going to produce um, around 30% more CO2 emissions than the entire use of coal from the whole of humanity has produced until today. That's an immense task that we have ahead of us and this is why we need to be looking at carbon capture and storage. And finally, the biggest one of all, which is transmission. It is no good being able to generate a million megawatts of power in the desert southwest if you can't get that power up to Cambridge where people need it. So what about nuclear? Given recent concerns about global climate change, there's been a rebirth of interest not seen since the 1970s. New nuclear plants are expected to cost six to seven billion dollars each. Although six to seven billion dollar projects are not unique in the energy business, they're typically done by the major oils. The relatively small U.S. electric power companies cannot finance new nuclear without financing support from state governments, the federal government, or both. Chances are it'll take a range of technologies as well as social and political changes to make real and lasting progress. So what's MIT's role in all this? The problem of energy is the biggest problem around and it deserves MIT's attention. So the, the unique combination of engineering and science and entrepreneurship and management and of course venture capital uh, that all forms around MIT, we can solve the energy crisis so we better get working on it. We have a long tradition in working in three ways that you don't expect from most universities. First of course, we work freely across disciplines. We also work almost instinctively with a global perspective. And perhaps most important of all, if we want to accelerate the implementation of new technologies, we have to work enthusiastically with industry, which is something that MIT is particularly good at. But we need a sense of urgency, but not a sense of panic. 
We need a sense of hope, not a sense of fear. We need the politics of possibilities, not the politics of limitation and punishment. And no matter how ingenious any technology or how inspired any policy idea coming out of my campus, they just won't work without private sector leaders who can help solve our great shared energy problems to transform those problems into opportunities. I originally came to MIT to work on water, particularly water management in the developing world. But since I've been here, I've gotten really interested in the nexus between water and energy. And over the past few months, I've been working with Justin on a startup called Nanopure for energy efficient water desalination. And since coming to MIT, the focus of my interest has been at the intersection of entrepreneurship and clean energy technology. And one of the highlights of my experience has been working with Vanessa to make this business plan into a real company. When MIT chose to relight the Great Dome this past year, it only made sense to do it in an energy efficient way. Thanks to innovative design, the dome lights consume less electricity than two hair dryers. And the new solar photovoltaic array behind us produces many times the energy that the dome consumes, making this installation a net gain for MIT's energy profile. As we confront the energy challenge on a global scale, we feel confident that MIT will continue to lead, providing clear thinking, innovative solutions, and as always, shedding a little light in the darkness. Thank you.